The purpose of this basic Ajax with the Flask video is to show how to send basic Ajax GET and POST requests from a browser to your Flask application and how to handle the data on a server Flask side. So I have here a very basic Flask project. It has only one URL pattern that says that all requests to the root address will be handled by the index function. And the index function just renders to a user the index.html template as a response to his GET request. In its turn, the index.html template has only one button. And uh, I want to focus your attention that in this example, I'm not using form, it's just a button. Also, there are two columns with a two empty unordered lists on the page. The left column and the right column. The page looks like this. In the index.html templates, I've attached bootstrap and the jQuery library and my custom JavaScript file, main.js, that I will use to perform Ajax requests. Also, there is a CSS file with uh, some styles for list item tags. It's just bootstrap card CSS. So it's a very simple app. Now let's say that the Ajax request should be sent to the server when the user clicks this green button. So let's describe it in a main.js file. First of all, I want to wait until the page will be ready. So Then I want to set the click handler to the button. Let's identify the button element by its CSS class. Then I'm calling the Ajax function that gets a dictionary as an argument. And the first key is uh, the URL key. It's the URL to send the request to. It will be a root address. Then the type. The type is the type of the HTTP method. I want to use the get method for now. Because I want to get or to read some information from the server. Also, I want to set the content type key to the application JSON. Then the data key. The data is the dictionary with the data I want to send to the server. For example, I want to send to the server the text of my button. So I'm getting the button element with uh, this construction. This already refers to the button element because uh, we are describing the on-click event on the button. So this refers to the btn element. And I'm calling its text method to get its text. And also I want to use the success key. The success key is uh, what will happen when the server will respond successfully. If the server will respond successfully, that is with uh, the 200 status code, I want to change the text of the button to what the server will return me. So that will be a function that takes a response from the server as an argument. Then again I'm getting the button and again I'm calling its text method and I have to pass into it a new value this time. Let's say that will be the value of the second key of the response object. Response seconds. And that's all with the JavaScript part for now, and now the Flask part. And what will Flask do? 
As you know, all parameters of requests are stored in the request object. So let's import the request object. Now let's get the text of the button. We know that when a user clicks on the button, front end will send a GET request. All GET requests data can be stored in the args attribute of the request object. Actually, the args attribute stores key value pairs from the URL string. But as I don't use forms in this example, the parameter of the get request will be in the args attribute too. So the text of the button will be request args. Args is a dictionary, so we can call its get method to get the data that front end sent. And as we remember, front end sent the button text. Let's print it. And let's test it. F5. Button text no. I am clicking the button and the button text go. OK, it's working. We got the data from the front end. Now I want to send to the front end some data from my server from the flask index view function. Let's remove this. And I want it to send to the front end the time in seconds. It's so called epoch time or Unix time. The epoch or Unix time is the time passed from the January the 1st of the 1970 in seconds. To use it, I want to import from the time module the time function. From time, import time. And uh, let's get the time in seconds. I'm calling the time function. And the, my response to the client side should be a JSON serializable object. So I have to use the JSONify function. Let's import it. And now let's return a new data in seconds. Return JSONify and gets a dictionary as an argument with the key seconds. So let's test it. And we can see that the button disappeared and we got the JSON object that the index view returned. To fix it in the index function, I have to check whether the request was an AJAX request or not. To do it, I have to use the isJSON property. If request is JSON, the isJSON property will return true or false. It should return true because we set the content type of get requests as an application JSON. So it should be true. So if it's a JAX request, then the function will return this object. Otherwise, it will render the index template. Let's test it again. We got our button. OK, and we got the time in seconds as uh, the text of the button. It works. OK, now let's append seconds to the left unordered list. In main.js file, let's add a new line to the success key. So let's get the left list. And uh, I am appending a new list item.
response seconds. Let's test it again. F5. Okay, we got cards as uh, last items. The next thing I want to do is to send uh, an Ajax post request to our Flask app. We got a list of these cards with the seconds and now I want to send an Ajax request by clicking on a card. This card on this card. So let's start with the JavaScript again. I need a new handler and uh, the logic will be absolutely the same. First of all, I have to define the onClick handler. The main idea on this step is to use a delegation mechanism to handle clicks on specific cards. So firstly, I am getting the parent container of these cards. It's our unordered left list. So let's get it. Then I'm calling its own method. And as the first argument, I'm defining the event I need to handle. That'll be the click event. Then the second argument. Here I need to define a descendant element of the UL tag on which I want to process the click event. It will be its child, its last item element. And then we have to define what should happen when the click will occur. It'll be a new Ajax request to the Flask site. So it's a function. And then again, let's call the Ajax method. The URL will be an empty string that is the root URL, the type this time will be post, the content type will be again the application JSON, then the data. This time I want to send to the Flask side a JSON string, JSON stringify. The stringify method gets as an argument a JavaScript object, a dictionary, with uh, the text key. And then I want to get the text of a specific list item tag. And again, I'm using this construction. And uh, this, this here refers to the specific list item element on which the click was occurred. And then the success key. It's a function that gets a response from the server. And this time I want to append the right column with the data that we will get from the flask. So let's get the right column, right list. I am calling the append method and I want to append it with the last item text. Response and let's say that this time the response from the server will have the data key. And now the server side. First of all, I want the index function can accept get and the post requests. By default, all Flask views can handle only GET requests. So I have to specify here the methods, methods parameter. It's the last GET POST. Then I also have to separate the GET request from POST requests in the logic on the index function. So here I want to check if requests method is a get. If it's a get request, then I do this. It 
if it's post, I want to get the text of a card. Card text, and it'll be request data. I am using here the data attribute because in this example I don't use any HTML forms. In most cases the data attribute will be empty and if you use a form in your templates you have to use the form or the JSON attribute. Form or JSON. Request data is an attribute where Flask stores data of request body when Flask couldn't parse it as a form data. I don't use forms here, so I have to use the data attribute. And uh, the request data are always a bytes strain. So I want to use the JSON loads function to parse it to a dictionary. So let's import the JSON module. And let's wrap this with the call of loads function. JSON loads. And then I want to get the value of the text key. The loads will return a dictionary. So I'm calling the get method to get the text key, the value of the text key. Because the data this time has the text key and uh, I use it here. And then I want to do something with uh, the card text. Let's say the text, new text will be will be an F string, for example, something like this card text. And then let's return this new text to client side. Return again the JSONify and uh, it will get a dictionary with the data key. And the data key has the new text variable as, an, uh, as uh, the value. I use here the data because uh, in the success key I'm using the data the data key of the response object. So let's test it again. F5. Click, click, click. Okay, it works. That's all for now with uh, get and post AJAX requests with the Flask framework. So if you like the video, please leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.